Spoiler, the dog steals the picture. 2011 saw three acclaimed movies about movies. One was My Week with Marilyn, and two were about silent movies. Each one of those won five Oscars. Now, what are the odds of that? I've already talked about one of them, Hugo. Today, I'm talking about the other, The Artist. Number 11 in the series, and Vida, also number 11. Not quite vlogging every day, am I? More like Vioda. Vlog every other day, August. Like Singing in the Rain, the artist is set in the disruptive era when movies learn to talk, but some stars did not take kindly to microphones and vice versa. Unlike Singing in the Rain, the artist is itself a silent movie, a 21st century silent movie. It's not a parody of silent films, it just is one. Black and white, narrow screen, we don't hear what the actors are saying, we see intertitles. There's a music score, an Oscar-winning music score, and a controversy about that score that I'll talk about in the extras. A modern silent movie, that's the concept, or the gimmick, or if you prefer, the audacious creative vision of writer, director, co-editor Michel Azanavicius. Azanavicius, clearly a fan and close student of the art and technique of silent films, he crafted a witty script that captures their method of storytelling even more miraculously. With his producer, Thomas Langman, he actually found funding to get this film made. Hey guys, I want to make a black and white silent film. You in? What do you say? Sign here. From its first showing at Cannes in May 2011, the artist was a sensation. By the end of the award season the following year, the artist had swept so many awards in so many countries, the awards themselves have their own Wikipedia article. A big part of what makes the artist work is its look. It's just visually stunning. Ozanavicious and team found iconic locations in old Hollywood, downtown LA, Hancock Park, great old theaters, restaurants, homes from the era, Mary Pickford's house, Mary Pickford's actual bed, and the best use of the Bradbury building since Blade Runner. Costumes by Mark Bridges are perfect, hairstyles, cars, furnishing, topography, camera angles. They all capture the period, with one small exception to annoy purists, putting photographs on the front page of Variety. The artist just looks right. The lead actors, Jean Dujardin and Berenice Bejot, give engaging, layered performances. You see their emotions as people, then you watch them turn on a little extra sheen to sparkle as movie stars when they appear in public, and their mannered performances as players in the movies within the movie. Dujardin and Georges Valentin channels the dashing athleticism of Douglas Fairbanks and the eternally boyish charm of Gene Kelly. Bejo as Peppy Miller carries herself with the open, playful sensuality of it girl Clara Bow. The production team and leads are French, but key supporting players are American. Of course, it's a silent film, so the mixed accents of French and American cast members, not an issue. John Goodman is the studio head, strong performance, maybe a little too strong. He is so hammy and muggy in this. James Cameron, George Valentin's loyal, attentive chauffeur, is a little more nuanced. Penelope Ann Miller is George's neglected wife in a crumbling marriage. She's given very little to do in the picture but suffer, but she does it well. Missy Pyle, as his movie co-star, also suffers the brunt of George's arrogance. And, of course, the dog, Uggy, one of the best movie dogs ever. Now, classic story structure says Act 1, you get your hero up a tree. Act 2, you throw stones at him. Act 3, you get him out of the tree. In The Artist, Acts 1 and 3 are superb. The opening sequences of the film are breathtaking, very witty, they had me grinning with delight. The closing, which took months and months of training and rehearsal, also very satisfying. Act two, a little melodramatic for my taste. Uh, here's why. George Valentin is up a tree. People keep offering him ladders to get him out of the tree, but his ego and stubbornness and arrogance keep him climbing to higher and higher branches. George Valentin is not a nice guy. Self-absorbed, brittle, big smile, tiny heart. It's rare to have a lead character who's emotionally unavailable to anyone else in the movie. He ignores his wife, he ignores his leading lady, he ignores his boss, he even ignores the rising young star who has a crush on him. Despite the obvious flashes of chemistry between them, he's cold to her. If it weren't for his dog, there would be nobody in the film he can relate to. Cinephiles will recognize elements of Singing in the Rain, A Star is Born, Citizen Kane. The artist is a tale of disruptive technology where old stars are forced to make way for the young and the new. Should be right at home with YouTube. At one point, the studio head says the public wants fresh meat, and the public is never wrong. Yep, take it from this piece of old and moldy meat, the studio head has it right. When the technology shifts, you can adapt or you disappear. The artist is a stunt, but Aznavicius pulls it off really well with a measure of respect for the medium he salutes. DVD Extras 
The Artist is the first French-produced film to win the Oscar for Best Picture. Its star, the first French actor to win Best Actor. Now, some of that has to do with the merits of the movie and the performance, but a lot of it has to be the brilliant award campaigning of Harvey Weinstein. Weinstein has been gaming the Oscars and winning awards for 25 years. I'll link to a story about his relentless, ingenious, sometimes ruthless techniques. At one point in The Artist, Georges Valentin screens one of his old movies. I was amazed at how faithfully he managed to duplicate the athletic, acrobatic stunts of Douglas Fairbanks, until I read that what I was watching was actually a clip from a Fairbanks movie with the Jean Dujardin's face cut in for the close-ups. Uh, movie magic. Movie theft. Can anyone tell the difference? A more disturbing lift that I did recognize right away is on the soundtrack. The film features an original score by Ludovic Vors. There's a bit of classical music, a few pop tunes, some Ellington, but it's mainly original until suddenly, at the emotional climax of the film, I was startled to hear something that just didn't seem to belong there. It's the love theme of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. At six minutes, this lift from a Bernard Herrmann score is the longest music cue in the artist. For me, it took me right out of the picture. Cognitive dissonance. My problem wasn't that the music was out of place, it was that the emotions were out of place. That bit of music has a very specific emotional weight based on the way Hitchcock used it. Musically, it may have fit the new screen action, but emotionally, to me, it felt wrong. Now, I watched the artist with someone who didn't recognize the music. She thought it was fine. But then, things exploded. Because Kim Novak, who starred in Vertigo and was obviously among those who recognized that music cue as being from her picture, Novak took out a full-page ad in the trains and cried, RAPE! She actually used that word. This is what she said. I want to report a rape. I feel as if my body, or at least my body of work, has been violated by the artist. You can read the full text of her ad in the description. Now, I, I just don't like using the word rape as a metaphor. Novak was widely challenged and criticized for it. She replied in an interview she felt she was entitled to the word because, well, let me quote her. When I said it was like a rape, that was how it felt to me. I had experienced in my youth being raped. So I identified with a real act that had been done to me. I didn't use that word lightly. I had been raped as a child. It was a rape I never told about. So when I experienced this one, I felt the need to express it. The director, Michel Aznavicius, responded, The artist was made as a love letter to cinema. I love Bernard Herrmann. His music has been used in many different films. I'm very pleased to have it in mind. I respect Kim Novak greatly, and I'm sorry to hear she disagrees. His full statement also in the description. Understand that Aznavicius licensed the music from this recording. He credited it as additional music in small type at the end of the credits of the artist. I wasn't happy to hear that music in this picture, but I think Kim Novak sabotaged her case by calling it a rape. It's hard to see how she or Vertigo or Hitchcock or Bernard Herrmann is damaged by quoting the score. But if you do know Vertigo, if Vertigo holds an important place in your memory of movies, maybe you reacted the way I did. What's that doing here? What movie am I watching? Here's how it happened. Aznavicius slotted the Vertigo love theme into the film while he was editing. It was meant only as a temporary track. He asked his composer, Ludovic Bourse, to write an original cue following the timings, tonality, and general mood of what Bernard Herrmann had written for Hitchcock. Well, maybe he followed it a little too closely. When I listen to what Bourse wrote, it sounds to me just like a watered-down, warmed-over version of the Vertigo love theme. In the end, Aznavicius preferred what Herrmann had originally written for what Bourse had written, so he kept it. Bourse got to include his version in the soundtrack album. Would you like to hear what Bourse wrote and compare it to what Herrmann wrote? Okay, wait till I get to the bubble. I think you should watch Vertigo, of course, and then watch the artist make up your own mind. But if you want a shortcut, here's Bernard Herrmann's love theme from Vertigo and Ludovic Bourse's cue. It's called My Suicide, dedicated to 03 29 1967. That date puzzled me. What was going on on March 29th, 67? Well, France launched their first atomic powered submarine? No. The Vietnam War was raging? No. The Beatles' Penny Lane was on the charts. No, after the Union of Broadcast Talent went on strike against American TV networks. No, took me a while, but Google finally coughed it up. March 29th, 1967 is director Michel Aznavicius's birthday. Here, the trailer for the artist. Oh, new Doctor Who tonight? Expect a review. Meanwhile, you can catch up on my earlier reviews of Doctor Who. Bye now.